banderne og ind i bokseklubber. Det er et mål med et bandeinitiativ i Gladsaxe Bokseklub Nordvest for København. Området er blandt andet belastet af bander i Værbroparken og Høje Gladsaxe. Og i dag skal de unge boksere fra Gladsaxe i kamp mod unge fra Nottingham i England. Her har det en lokale bokseklub formået at dæmme op for bandevold i den engelske by. Og nu skal det handle om, hvad Gladsaxe kan lære af Nottingham. Her i studiet har vi besøg af Philip Samson, som er mentor i Gladsaxe i bokseklubben der. Og selv tidligere bandemedlem. Velkommen til dig. Okay. Og nu slår jeg over i engelsk for at sige velkommen til Marcellus Bass from Hi. Nottingham. Welcome to you as well. Hi. Um, you're a former gang member yourself. Uh, and I hear that you almost single-handed have uh, stopped the gang violence in uh, Nottingham with your boxing uh, club. How did you do that? Uh, first of all, I'd say I wouldn't single-handedly <laughs> done anything like that because uh, without the support of uh, of the people that have been supporting me, like the community and and a majority of the people, like you, you know, the, the people from my team, all the guys behind us, um, and then getting support from the authorities, like the city council, you know, and and then together as a combined force, I reckon we've made some difference, but we've still got a lot of work to do. But uh, you must have done uh, something special, and you have got royal attention as well. Uh, what did you do to drag the kids from uh, the streets and the gangs into your club? Well, the thing is, is just giving kids, you know, the opportunities and giving kids, you know, something to do, giving things, uh, giving kids that engagement, because I feel that, you know, um, people like us who've been there and done it before, we can relate to the kids, we can understand the kids. We've been through situations, what they are going through beforehand, you see, so we can relate to them and by us relating to them, we can build relationships up through sports and then bring them into other avenues and, and help and support them in other avenues. So we look at different things like early intervention, then we look at kids who are on the cusp of offending or antisocial behaviour and we look at people who may be in crime looking for opportunities to get out of crime, you know, so we're looking at different models of, of things within Nottingham. Mm. Uh, Philip Samson, uh, what can you learn from Nottingham uh, in the way of getting kids out of gangs and into your club? Well, um, a, a year ago, a young kid was was killed about a couple of hundred meters from our boxing club, and we thought that we had to to, to do something about this this gang while we are former gang members ourselves. Um, so we 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 put together this gang init initiative and. The local uh, um, politicians, one of the local politicians asked us, but are there similar uh, initiatives in Denmark? And, and there wasn't. So we looked abroad and uh, looked to America, looked to Britain. And in Britain, we, we found Marcellus Bears and we called him and he said, come over. So we came over there to see what they have done, former gang members and how they can help um, instead of, of, you know, n normal uh, experts, normal pedagogue and things yeah, like that. Yeah, but is it necessary to have a former gang member to be able to do this? It's, if you, as, as Baz said himself, if you've been there yourself, you mm. know what's, what's, what the consequences are of the things that you're doing. You, you can explain these young people what the consequences are, what it is to be, what it's like to be in prison and, and, and so forth, in a much better way than, than people who haven't been there uh, can do. Mm -hmm. But is, it, is that uh, thanks to your background you, you, can, you can do that? Could I mean, you have done it without uh, your background as a gang member? I think my background definitely helped me loads to be able to, you know, relate to people and understand people. And I think when you can understand and relate to people, you can start using other skills that you've acquired in the future to combine both together to make the difference. How does the gangs react to, to your work? Are they... Uh Upset about it, or, or what? Well, we're, we're not going in saying that we want to, to to dissolve the gangs as such. We're trying to, to stop young people from going into the gangs. You know, so when when they're in the gangs, forget them. You know, we can't do anything about them. That's that's not our our, our problem. But we are trying to tell young people, 12, 13, 14 years old, before they go into the gangs, this is what will happen if you go in there and and. You know, Is that your experience as well? Yeah. Are they in the gangs? You can do nothing about it or what? No, no, because I think that people in gangs are looking for opportunities to get out as well, you know. Sometimes um, people may be in a gang and think, I want to get out, how do I get out? And what we've acquired is like a vicious circle. It's like if somebody gets a criminal record, they find it difficult mm -hmm. to get a job when they want to get out of a job. And because they find it difficult to get a job, they go back 
back into crime. So we've identified this vicious circle. But what we're trying to do is break that vicious circle and give these kids an opportunity to come out of gangs into civilization. But uh, do they need to have success in boxing uh, to be able to stay out of the gangs? Yeah, because I think that, bo well, I know that boxing gives um, kids disciplines, you know, foundations. It helps them with, like, uh, social skills, life skills, like timekeeping, you know, b positive body language, having respect for an individual. So these basic foundations and disciplines will help build b uh, a building block to, uh, to bigger and better things like employment, training, education, yeah. so that kids can sustain that rather than, you know, going into that. And it, with, with, without them disciplines, they can't kind of sustain that and they'll kind of drop out and then you're having relapses. Mm -hmm. You've had a, a, a fine uh, backup from the authorities in, in Nottingham. And how have it uh, been here in Denmark, Philippe? Well, we, we, um, we talked to the lo uh, local authorities, Kompletet Bestuels and Iglesias, seven, eight, nine months ago, and they have been supporting us. But it, it's a bu bureaucra bureaucratic system and it takes a long time. But we're, now we are getting through and we're getting the funds that we have asked for. Uh, and, and then we can start the the, the best up that we have um, <coughs> asked for money to to, mm. to start up. And how is the interest to to get into the club um, from the kids? Well, the the, the local uh, do they contact kids, you uh, yourself uh, or do you have to go out and, both, and find the both. kids? It's, okay, it's, yeah. it's both uh, yeah. because they don't really know much about it. Their parents do, and their parents mm. are, are following us on the social media and and, and, and the way we're getting our, our message out. And they're coming down to the club, and they're starting up. And uh, yeah, what is your best advice to the guys in uh, Glad Saxon? My best advice for, for these guys is to be real, to use their personal experiences as, as, well, as well as the ones that they've acquired, and to build relationships and network with as many, like public, voluntary, community. Um, all the authorities, and to be able to find the best opportunities for these young people. Thank you, Marcellus Bass from Nottingham, og tak til dig, Philip Samson fra Gladsaxe. Så kan jeg da lige gøre lidt reklame for stævnet i aften, fordi det er altså et boksestævne mellem danske og engelske bokser fra Nottingham, som finder sted i aften. Det begynder kl. 17, og det er i Gladsaxe Sportshall.